Welcome back to Sizzy Reviews, and today I am doing a review on a Netflix series that I have been waiting for and waiting for. I did watch Daredevil Season 1 and 2, I did watch Jessica Jones, and now Luke Cage. Okay, this starts off in the time after Daredevil and Jessica Jones. So if you did not see them, I did do a review on Daredevil Season 2. I did not do Jessica Jones, but Daredevil 2 will be in the description box below. I am warning you, spoiler alert, if you did not see Luke Cage yet, what are you waiting for? But I am going to be reviewing the season. So, with that said, let's get started. As I said, it started after all the craziness that hit New York City with the Avengers and Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Kilgrave and all that madness. The Punisher, everybody. And it's after, if you watch Jessica Jones, Luke Cage is in... Jessica Jones through the whole thing because as you know Jessica Jones killed his wife Reva now there were reasons for that and in Luke Cage it goes back and shows you how he became Luke Cage and how it got to the point where Kilgrave got a hold of her and in Jessica Jones and how it all played out as to how she killed her. Now, he is, when it first starts out, he's working in a barbershop, sweeping up and everything, minding his business, keeping to himself, and the owner of the barbershop is named Pops. And he was like, he's there in Harlem, and he's like a big influence in Harlem. His barbershop is Switzerland. Everything is safe there. The kids are safe to go there. It's been that way for ever. And it shows you the character, so as it progresses, you see how people were before, how they unfold, and how the story tells itself. Now, Pops loves the children in the neighborhood, would do anything for them. And then, of course, the villain of the story is Cottonmouth, a.k.a. Stokes. So, everyone calls him Mr. Stokes or his cousin, which is a political figure. She's the Madam council person, Councilwoman, and she calls, calls him Cornell. His name is Cornell Stokes, but his, like, a villain name on the streets is Cottonmouth. So, it goes in to show him. He has a club. He's running it. And he does some side deals and end up stealing from his providers, like, guns and money and stuff to help his cousin pay back all the money that was put into a fund for her renaissance program and I'm sorry I'm talking like this I kinda gotta like sneeze and I don't wanna sneeze on camera but sorry into her renaissance program so they're teamed up together and they have a building in Corpus Christi in Harlem and they have all this money put there, all their dealings that goes through the club, that she runs the money, launders it, and brings it back out clean through her investors and things like that. So, everything was fine until the kids that got involved that he made steal the money and the guns 
so it could look like everybody got robbed. Domingo, he heads up the Spanish side of it, and he was supposed to get the guns. And um, Diamondback, which he's like another villain, but they don't show him until like the last six episodes of the season. And he turns out to be the supplier. So he sends a guy named Shades to see what happened, what's going on, why is his, um, his, his guns gone, and his money and everything. Domingo wants to know why the guns is gone. So now everybody is on Cotton Mouth's back. So now he's kind of folding under pressure he goes out the same people the same three kids that he told to steal for him he goes out on a search to find and kill them the first two guys Chico and <coughs> excuse me this other guy kill the guy from the club where Cottonmouth works at well, where he owns. And he was supposed to be the bartender that night, but he wasn't. So Luke Cage got to bartend that night. Which in turn, he met a cop, which he thought was an auditor. They went out for coffee, if you know what I mean. And so now that people are dying, she has to come back to talk to him. And then he realizes, like, oh, you're not an auditor, you're a cop. So, it goes on. Now she's all suspicious about him because he's everywhere that the drama happens. He was at the club that night. He works at Pops where Chico and the other boy hung out at. And they all knew each other. They all played basketball together. And so, he's in the middle of everything. So now when it comes to Chico, he's the last one left because Cottonmouth beat the other boy to death because he wouldn't talk, but if he did talk, then they would know that Cottonmouth set them up to rob it. So his loyalty, in turn, got him beat to death, which is so messed up. I said that. And now, Chico's hiding out somewhere, and Shades and Tone... One of Cottonmouth's men is like, well, you want me to take care of it? And he's like, no, if Chico's not flashing and he's nowhere to be found, leave it alone. So, Tone took that as, okay, I'm going to make my own decision and I'm going to go do something stupid, which he did. He went to Pops, which was Cottonmouth's best friend and Chico's father Wilfredo's best friend back in the day they had a little crew and so they all stayed neutral Wilfredo was in jail and his son is Chico Cottonmouth and Pops now they all stayed neutral and didn't cross each other so Tone takes it upon himself to go shoot up the barbershop and kill everybody now, Pops was in there. He got killed because the bullets ricocheted off Luke Cage because, well, everybody that knows the story of Luke Cage, he is unkillable. Like, you cannot kill him. Bullets bounce off of him. You can't hurt him. Nothing. So, bullets bounced off of him, killed Pops, and he was able to save the boy, though. So, in turn, saving the boy... Everybody else died. So now he had it out for Cottonmouth because he thought that it was his command and it wasn't. So when Tone got back to Cottonmouth and was like, Look, I took care of it. And he's like, Okay, well, Chico was outside. And he was like, No, he was inside. He was like, So where's Pops? Pops is dead. So he got pissed off and he threw Tone over the side of the building. Now, where the funeral home is, when they want bodies gone, they kill them and they take them there because then they disappear. Most likely cremate them so nobody will ever find them. So that's what he has running with the funeral home. So Tone disappeared, nobody ever found him.
And so did the boys that he killed and everything like that. So then it goes on to, it starts getting crazy. Because Luke Cage is, he's on fire now. He's pissed off at everybody, so he starts shaking cotton mouse people down. And he doesn't kill anybody, though. He just beats them up, throws them places and stuff. So he shut down Corpus Christi, which Misty, the Madam Councilwoman, Cotton Mouth's cousin, she was upset about that. $7 million got pulled out of her office and was on the news. So now she's in the middle of everything. And so now she's got it out for Luke Cage, and so does Cotton Mouth. They go back and forth, back and forth. Shades tries to tell him, you know, back off a little bit. This is bringing you down. You know, chill. We forget about Luke Cage. He doesn't listen. And he starts beating up people and robbing people and saying, oh, this is because of Luke Cage. If you upset about it, go see Luke Cage. So they do on Pop's funeral day. And the cops said he couldn't go to the funeral, which I think was messed up because that was, like, his best friend. So, he goes and starts getting the stuff back from the guys that attacked him, attacked the people in town. And he's like, don't blame me, blame Cottonmouth. Tell him to keep my name out his mouth. So, I don't want to draw this out really. I don't want to draw this out that much further at this point. I'm already 11 minutes in, and I know you're like, oh my gosh. But, so, Cottonmouth gets killed. Shades and Willis Stryker, which turns out to be Luke Cage's brother, Carl Lucas, because that's, they show you how he became Luke Cage, and initially how it all started, and then the war begins because then Luke Cage finds out that it's his brother Willis Stryker that set him up and got him sent to Seagate prison where he became Luke Cage from some experimental situation. Him and Shades got in a fight. They jumped him. They beat him up real bad. He was gonna die. His wife Reva told them to save him and he put him on this machine and the warden pulled the plug, made the temperature go up, and it blew up, and then he became, like, unkillable. So it went through all that. So then Willis Stryker got some type of material to, in turn, be as strong as Luke Cage and started killing people and saying it was Luke Cage. Misty followed through with the story because she teamed up with Stryker, who was Diamondback, and Shades, and Domingo, and they killed all the other head bosses in town, and of course, sent them to the funeral home where they get rid of bodies so nobody knows where they are and they disappear. At this point, it's, it's adding up to him trying to kill Luke Cage. He found bullets online that pierces the body and explodes, so he shot Luke Cage with the bullet and he realized okay it worked because he started bleeding and they started fighting and then he got to shoot him again so then the nurse from daredevil if you watched it you'll know who i'm talking about she came into play she took him to the guy that made him that way and they end up putting him in a tank of acid to weaken his body turning up the temperature like they did in the beginning and making him weak enough where they could remove the shrapnel from the bullet that blew up inside of him and then his healing instincts would kick in and he'd be okay. So that's what happened. And then they realized when they were looking at the USB drive where it originally showed that his wife Reva died for and Jessica Jones. So like I said, you might want to check out those two so you can kind of come up to date with Luke Cage when you do watch it. And that his wife knew all along everything that was going on, the experiments and everything, and he was just devastated because he thought she was this innocent woman and had nothing to do with it, and she was basically heading up the operation in the prison, Seagate Prison. So after that, 
um, Willis Stryker decided, okay, if I can't kill him, because somehow he got out of that, they were going to sell the bullets to the police to have it where they could kill Luke Cage, but it was modified because they had to use the metal in ample supply, and they only had a certain amount, so they cut it down some, so it wouldn't be as deadly as one shot like Willis Stryker, but a hundred shots at him would do just as much damage. So, make a long story short, to cut down the season a little bit, they sold the bullets to the cops and they were able to apprehend Luke Cage and then the cop, uh, Misty, that she told them that Luke Cage saved her life, that it was Diamondback that was doing all this and then after that they didn't believe it and then Luke Cage and Diamondback, which is Willis Stryker, got into a fight on the street and everybody was watching and they was cheering Luke Cage on to beat him and I'm not going to spoil that for you if he won or not. But then after that, the people from Seagate Prison came to pick up Luke Cage as Carl Lucas and take him back to prison and the stuff that would free him the guy in the barbershop found Bobby Fisher, and he's going to, in turn, give it to Luke Cage or whatever in season two. All in all, it was a great season. Loved it. Um, there was a lot of use of the N-word, if you know what I mean, and I did not like that part because it was derogative. It wasn't. Well, there's no real positive way you could use that, but if you're uncomfortable or you hate that word in general, maybe you shouldn't watch this because it is a lot of use of the word. And it um, does portray the ghetto part of Harlem. So if you're not into that type of stuff, then this is not for you. But... Like I said, all in all, it was a good season. It was really good. So was Daredevil 1 and 2. And Jessica Jones. So check them out. Let me know what you think. If you've seen them, comment in the comment box. And let me know what you thought of the seasons. But until next review, have a good night.